Hi, what's it here? I'm gonna be making a quick little video about uh, weapon picks and sort of deciding on your own weapon pool, which I think is a very important part of playing competitively. Everyone wants to play the correct weapons or whatever. So I, I kind of want to start out talking about the meta and how that plays into what you pick. Is there is kind of this mentality of you have to play meta weapons because they're the best, which I do not agree with at all. Instead, what meta weapons are usually is weapons that are just good all-around weapons. They're not necessarily what's best for you, they're just good all-around weapons that are very easy to fit into a lot of situations. But I do think that is not the thing you should be focusing on. I think the meta is something to keep in mind when picking your weapon pool. I don't think that is the important thing. What I think rather is more important is what works for you individually. Which is kind of a combination of what you enjoy and just what actually works in practice. Because yeah, you might really like, for instance, like uh, the blue glugas, but in, in practice the blue glugas might not actually be more confusing, even if you really like them. But I, I do think it is important to keep in mind what you enjoy and what works for you. And this, this is something I actually shared in. Twitter a bit about, where uh, if you're not familiar, Gamawumi does a really good job of making these sort of charts showing the usage rates of weapons and what teams play in different tournaments. In this case, this is Koshian, which just happened like yesterday. So Koshian is the big uh, turf for only tournament in Japan. Pretty much whoever wins Koshin is the Japanese team that makes it to World Championships. So like th this is this is a huge tournament. That's a really big deal, and that that's why uh, GG Boys has been the Japanese team to make it to World Champions the last few years because they won Koshin. This year it was a team called Another, which I I'm just, I'm actually somewhat of a fan of personally because they just have two players I'm personally a fan of, but you, you can kind of look. This is a translated message from another where they're pretty much, if you want to read it, pause and read it, that's fine, but they're pretty much just saying that part of what it makes them good is that they're focused on what they enjoy and what works for them. So this is coming, this isn't coming from like some Div 8 team that's just playing for fun, this is coming from the team that won one of the biggest tournaments in the world. And you, you can kind of see that in what well, they play, this sort of... Now if, you, if you're a little bit confused by what this all means, it's basically this is the comp as a whole that they won in use the most. So like they use these four specific weapons together and won the most with that. Whereas here it's more the individual weapons of each player where this player used ballpoint the most, this player individually used mini the most, this player individually used slasher the most. Whereas this is all four of these weapons played together at once was what won the most. Compared to having maybe a ballpoint instead of the CDS or whatever else they switch to. <laughs> but yeah, you can kind of see this interesting thing where the meta of tier 4 is pretty much double all 3, double baller. And most of these teams towards the bottom that got like a 5th place and lower are like fitting the meta comp. See double baller here, or double L3. Most most of them are vanilla L3 and then L3D and then a different baller weapon like Gold Arrow Spray or Slasher Deco or Explosher. 
And the other part of the meta is that you'll usually have an Explosher or a Firefin as your main range. And you see a lot of those. But one of the really interesting things is that the further you get to the top, the less the teams are playing the meta. And that may seem kind of weird to you because it's like the meta is what's best, right? So the team that won didn't run Ballers, they didn't run Alleries, they won didn't run Explosher, they didn't run Firefin. They ran a mini. I mean, they switched between CDS and Ballpoint. They played Slosher, Soda Slosher specifically. Even though what you usually see in Tier 4 is Slosher Deco. They ran a Junior, which you don't normally see in Tier 4. Usually you see armor, it's from Permabrush or NZAP specifically in Tier 4. So you've got four weapons that are a little bit abnormal in Tier 4. They're all off meta weapons. And the, they won because for these individual players, these are the weapons they're gonna do best with. Like, I'm not as familiar with. I think it's Liar is the CDS and Ballpoint player. I don't remember who the junior player is. I, I could check, but I don't want to take too much time up with this. But I am familiar with Baz and Rentana, who are. Baz is a really good mini main, and Rentana is a really good slot. Slosher main who mostly played Soda. And so, if this team, like if Baz played L3 instead of Mini, they very much might not have won because Baz isn't an L3 player, Baz is a Mini player. So while L3 does something similar in the team comp, and while L3 is the meta version, the meta weapon that everyone's playing, Baz is not an L3 player, Baz is a Mini player. Baz knows this, and plays mini, and wins a major tournament playing mini. And that's, that's kind of the idea I want to get to, where it's like, the meta weapon, the meta isn't necessarily what's best, it's what's good in sort of a vague, all-arounder kind of sense. So you can, you can put an L3 in any team comp, and it'll be a good addition for tier 4. But if you're not an L3 player, you might not actually be better off playing L3. It's just easy to fit in. And so yeah, that's, that's the thing I want to start out with. I can bring up another example of something that's not Tier 4, I just wanted to start with that because that literally just happened yesterday. But Zones Cup, you got a Tri Nouveau in the first place team. Of course, Zones Cup is a major tournament in Japan as well, where it just it's it's kind of huge. The rest of the team is a little bit centered around the meta a little bit more, but it's pretty reasonable to think that the people playing these weapons are probably playing them because they main the weapon, not because it's meta. And you see Inkstorm, which is a recent Western tournament where a Japanese team came in and won. And something you'll see a lot is there's a lot of these... In sort of like the second place going on... There's a ton of double armor ankles comps, and that's kind of the current meta right now. Where everyone, everyone wants to run something like a Knot or a Bamboo, or... In this case, they're running a Squeezer, and then they run double armor, usually a Zap and something else. Or two Zaps. And the team that won ran a charger and one armor, and they ran a brush. And it's, it's this interesting thing where it's like, the, the team that beats the meta doesn't beat the meta by playing the meta better, they just beat the meta by playing what they're good at. <laughs> because these players would not be better off playing the meta they're better off playing what they're good at. But there is there is kind of another factor. Going back to Zones Cup, uh, this Slosher is actually Rentana, who I mentioned for the Turf War, Koshin. And like I said, Rentana is a Slosher main, mostly playing Soda, but right now he's playing Tri Nouveau. The reason for that is because they're going a bunch of against a bunch of armors and 
people usually don't like playing Soda against farmers. So Rantana had to... felt like playing against all those armors wasn't working as well with Slosher, even though he was the best with Slosher. So he found a similar alternative that dealt with armors better. Found something else that also fit the way he wants to play the game and his own personal strengths, while still kind of keeping in mind what the meta is, and keeping in mind that he's going to be playing a bunch of, bunch of weapons that his main might usually struggle against. And so, it is, it is somewhat important to keep the meta in mind, but you don't copy the meta, you just keep in mind that it's there. And remember that the best weapons in the meta are just good all-around weapons, not what you should be playing. So, when that comes into deciding what you want to play, I think you kind of make a priority list. And I'm, I'm actually going to break up mine. I use the tier list maker because even though I don't really agree with tier lists, tier list makers are a good way of like visualizing certain things. So I, like primarily, I've been a heavy main for a very long time. Pretty much since like I, I started playing ranked when I was like level 20 or 30 or whatever. I, I've, I've been a heavy main for the longest time. If you fail on my channel, you, that might seem a bit weird because I don't actually play heavy that much. It's kind of a secondary for me, but the main reason for that is that we have a bamboo player on our team. And we don't want both heavy and bamboo at the same time. So, while heavy is sort of the top of my priority list, anytime it makes sense for me to play heavy, I'm going to play heavy. Most of the time, it doesn't make sense for me to play heavy because we also have a bamboo. But, so that's that's kind of the mentality behind this, where it's like, the higher it is, the higher it is, the less likely I am to play it in a certain way. Where it's like, that that might not be wording it right. Basically, the thing at the top of the list is the thing I will play any time it makes sense. Whereas the stuff at the bottom is more the stuff where it's like, I play that when whatever's above it doesn't make sense. So you can kind of see I have Heavy at the top, anytime it makes sense to play Heavy, I will play Heavy. Anytime I want Stingray, I'm going to play the Stingray Heavy over Remix. I do actually end up playing Remix more often, but I prioritize the Ray if it makes sense. Whereas this is kind of the default if this doesn't make sense. And if I'm not playing Heavy, which is most of the time because we usually have a Bamboo like I said, I default to Try, and sort of that's I, I consider try to be my main right now because that's what I play the most often, but it's ultimately like the second in the list because I will play heavy if it makes sense instead. But you can kind of see here, right now I've been playing Nouveau on Rainmaker since the uh, Splat Bomb and Inkstorm is a little bit better suited for that mode. And if it's not Rainmaker, I play Vanilla. I play Vanilla more often because I play on three modes and this on one mode, but. Nouveau is sort of higher on the list because I'll play it in situations where it makes sense. In situations where it doesn't make sense, I play this. Which is most of the time. And then what I've kind of been messing around with is these weapons. Which there was a time where it was just... If I didn't play Try, I played Zap. But I don't personally really like Zap, it doesn't really resonate me with me very well. So I wanted another option, you see me try some different things, including CDS, and I kind of ended up with Mini, which makes sense for me as an individual, because I'm a heavy player, and Mini is a, another Splatling that, while it has a lot of differences, it does have a lot of similarities, and kind of appeals to me for a similar reason that heavy appeals to me. And so, in situations where it makes sense, I will play Mini, and if it makes sense to play Kensa, I will play Kensa over Vanilla, but in a lot of situations it doesn't make sense, so I default down to Vanilla. With Zap kind of being at the bottom, which Zap is the most rounded of these options. Like, if I was a Zap main, I could just play Zap and only play Zap. 
but I'm not a Zap main. And for me, Zap is the pocket weapon. I just play when the weapons I usually play don't make sense. And there's not a lot of situations where they don't make sense, but there are still a decent amount. And this, the bottom of the list, is where I think the meta plays in. To some extent, at least. Like, the, the thing you default to for when what you usually play doesn't make sense is, I think, where you should pay attention to the meta the most. Because the meta, as I said, is good all-arounder weapons. They're weapons you can just fit in anywhere and it'll work, for the most part. So if we, if we don't want armor, I might go CDS here, because that's also a meta weapon. Or I might go shot, which is another good all-arounder meta weapon. It, it all depends on what the team wants. And so, the meta weapon I pick isn't based on what I like, it's based on what the team wants. Whereas everything above this is based largely on what I enjoy playing, while also kind of keeping in mind what my team runs and what the meta currently is. Because if it weren't for like armor being as strong as it was, I might play Slosher instead of Try, for instance. Or if my team didn't have a Tetra, I might play K-Machine instead of Try, but since we have a Tetra, we don't really want double Slashdown. Like, double splash tank can be fine, but we specifically just don't want it. Just kind of weird. So that's kind of the thought process between, or for what I play, where it's basically I pick the thing that I do best with and like the most, and that is the top priority. Any situate, any time that makes sense, I will play it. And then, kind of the further down, the more, or. Yeah, the further down, the more situational it gets. Or the, the more... Wait, that's not actually the, what I want to say. The more... It's, it's kind of the opposite. The more well-rounded it gets. Or in, in the case of Mini, it's not actually more well-rounded than Try. It just is good in situations where Try is bad. So it kind of complements each other. Okay, I'm, I'm gonna clear this and stop talking about specifically my weapon pool. So let's take another example. So let's say you're a Custom Blaster main. Now Custom Blaster isn't really favored in the current meta, mostly because blasters don't do the best against armor, but if you just still do fine with it even in the current meta and still think it's worth using, it, it, then you, you, you keep playing it because you're a Blaster main. But there's definitely going to be situations where you don't want Custom Blaster. I mean, the main situation you would want it is, of course, Tower Control. His Blasters, and specifically Custom Blaster, are very good there. And probably, outside of Tower Control, just specific maps that are good for Blaster. And so what, what would you want outside of this? Well, if the only weapon you can't really care about is Custom Blaster, and you're fine with playing T-Tech, the most obvious alternative to that is just T-Tech. So you play Custom Blaster whenever it makes sense. If it doesn't make sense, you default to T-Tech. And then maybe also, uh, wherever it is, K-Shot. Yeah, K-Shot if uh, T-Tech doesn't make sense because you don't want the uh, Inkjet in a certain situation. There it is. But it, it's a very simple priority list. However, if you just don't really like T-Tech that much, or if you have a second weapon you also really like, you might move this down, so you play it less often. Though it still probably makes the most sense at the bottom of the list. So as a Custom Blaster main, maybe your secondary is... Uh, K-Machine, whatever that is. So any situation where Custom Blaster doesn't make sense, your fic first pick is K-Machine. And then if K-Machine doesn't make sense on top of that, you pick T-Tech, or maybe in this case, you pick, like, CDS. 
since the situations with K-Machine wouldn't be very good would be situations where CDS would be particularly good because it's probably gonna be longer range maps and more open maps. But again, it's sort of... You look at the things you personally do well with and like, you put that at the type, top of the list, and then you kind of fill in from there. If you got multiple things you like, you kind of put them in priority of which you'd rather play. And then at the very bottom of the list is kind of where you fill in with more standard picks based on just what, what you need filled. <laughs> like in this case, you might want a longer range option, so you just pick the meta range option because it's just easy to fit in. You might not be particularly good at CDS, you might not particularly care for CDS, but it's going to make the most sense for you in situations where what you are specialized in don't make sense. Because it's a it's just a decent pocket weapon. But of course right now in the uh, we had patch notes come out for the upcoming patch, so like it's it's possible that CDS won't be worth pocketing anymore, but that's that's what I'm kinda gonna worry about right now. Okay, another example, let's say you're a ballpoint main. Which ballpoint ballpoint is actually pretty easy to fit in. Like the most I can think of is like maybe some really short range maps, like a what's it called? Makeup art. Maps like makeup art, you might want something else. So then you can kind of think of, you know, what you might want to play instead. Which if you want to follow the meta, good option would. You just pick like K shot. <laughs> so you're probably not gonna really need much range on the maps where you're not playing ballpoint. You're gonna be picking something other than ballpoint mostly on maps where range isn't really that important. So you could easily just pick up K shot for those maps. Or as we saw in with I I believe it was Liar, when they switched to CDS in situations where ballpoint isn't very good. I think uh, Sluk, who is a Australian player, one of the top Australian players, does the same thing where he kind of plays ballpoint most of the time and switches CDS on short range maps. And that's that's actually a pretty good weapon pool. But maybe you don't really want to play CDS or you got another option you specifically like, like Blob Lobber. Might seem a bit weird, but Blob's actually pretty good in the situations where Ballpoint's not as good. And you, you might even switch the priorities around, where it's like you'll play Blob whenever it makes sense, but Ballpoint ends up making sense more often, so you end up playing Ballpoint more often anyways. And then, you know, maybe just fill in with K-Shot for, like, tower control on Black Belly. And the few other maps where neither of these really make sense for you. So that's, that's the general idea I want to get at, kind of, don't look at what you want to play as, you know, I should play what's meta, look at how what you play does against the meta, and kind of keep the meta in mind when you're picking those sort of filler pocket weapons, because they're, that's usually what they're best suited for, because they're usually these sort of all-rounder weapons that you can put on any map, any mode, any team comp, it works. But of course, also keep in mind the meta when it comes to picking your mains to some extent. Because, for instance, uh, I, I talked about Sloshers earlier, or like Range Blaster. Range Blaster is generally considered not really that great right now, because it doesn't deal with armor that well. It's maybe not the strongest weapon in general right now. So you see a lot of Range Blaster players, I think, playing K-Machine right now, or maybe they're playing uh, Kensa Rapid, wherever that is. So in th those kinds of cases, you've got range blaster players who are still kind of trying to find something that kind of reminds them of range blaster and feels like range blaster through K Rapid or K Machine, but they're picking something that does a bit better in the current meta than range blaster because they don't feel like range blaster is worth playing right now. 
even though it is what they're good at. And that's... I think that's gonna be all I have to say. The, the number one priority is definitely picking what works for you rather than what is the current meta. And keeping in mind what your team is running and what you're going to be playing against is going to be important as well. But ultimately the thing that takes priority is picking something you're personally good at. Even even if you're like an Octobrush main, like I, I think Octobrush is fine in the current meta. You might want an alternative for maybe like long range maps or something, but ultimately, like if you're good at Octobrush and you like Octobrush, like play it. Then maybe switch to like a K shot on more open maps. I don't know. If you really like Arrow Spray, I mean it's not great, but you can probably find situations where Arrow Spray is gonna be worth using. It's not gonna be often, but you you can play it. If you like Kent's Undercover, I'm personally a little iffy on it, but I think it can definitely be worth using, especially if you're actually good at the weapon. And then you, you kind of fill in with maybe like an end zap when that doesn't make sense, but you can, like, if you do well with this weapon, you're gonna be better off picking this than picking whatever the meta weapon is because it's what you do well with and then just the fact that you enjoy it as well will make it easier to kind of improve with it because you're gonna be more motivated to play it, you're gonna be more voted, ma motivated to put time into it and just actually improve with the weapon. Like a really good Kensa undercover player is going to be better than an okay NZAP player. That, that's, that's the kind of point I'm trying to get at. Like, if if you're into a weapon enough, I and mean, if, if you're good enough at a weapon, it doesn't matter if it's meta or not. It matters whether it's the best choice for you individually. And meta weapons are just sort of what you should fill in. Unless, of course, like, there are definitely people who are CDS mains. Or there's people who are NZAP mains, or there's people who are TKAC mains. In those situations, they can pretty much just play that one weapon and never have to switch off of it. Which is... kind of... kind of cool, but at the same time, depending on your feelings on that, it could feel kind of boring. But if you've got more situational pick, or kind of a weirder pick. It's still worth using if you're good at it. And if it fits your team comp and plays, these doesn't struggle completely against the current matter or whatever. And, yeah. I think I've been rambling, about, rambling on a bunch about, like, saying the same things over and over again pretty much for a while, so I'm gonna end it here. It's kinda... Well, even know with that, or leave off on that kind of mentality of like, pick what works for you. Don't pick what everyone else is playing. Just because it works for everyone else, pick what works for you. I'll uh, see you whenever I make my next video, and have fun.